Okay, still talking about Article 240. Let's talk about 240.24, location of overcurrent devices in slash on the premises. And, and what I mean by that is 240.21 talks about the location of overcurrent protection devices as it relates to their location in the circuit. All right, 240.21 says you have to have a circuit breaker or fuse at the beginning of the circuit or sometimes at the end of the circuit, right? But 240.24 talks about the actual location within the building. So outside, inside, above six foot seven, down low, right? So 240.24, the exception allowing tool usage was expanded and overcurrent devices are no longer allowed in any bathroom or similar location. Okay, 240.24a, accessibility. Circuit breakers and switches that contain fuses must be readily accessible. So let's stop right there because this is the issue. Readily accessible means that it's capable of being reached quickly without requiring a person to climb over or remove obstacles or climb under obstacles uh, or resort to portable ladders or use tools other than a key. Okay, so <laughs> a lot of times you have to use a tool to access the overcurrent device and that's normal and that's been the case for a very long time but we didn't really have any good exceptions here until the 2023 edition so let's keep reading breakers fuses have to be readily accessible center of the grip of the operating handle in its highest position must not be higher than six foot seven above the floor or working surface all right awesome this circuit breaker is too high above the ground right now if you look down here on the bottom it looks like they're gonna maybe add some dirt here and we'll do some creative grading and get that less than six foot seven once we're done with the project but as of right this second when i took this picture that was way too high above the ground it was kind of funny because they actually called me out for an inspection at that point it's like well <laughs> unless i have a rocket backpack i ain't doing your inspection today sorry <laughs> can't get to it so anyway once they establish grade it'll be lower than six foot seven and we'll comply now there's an exception that says using a tool is allowed because again readily accessible means you can't use a screwdriver a nut driver a ratchet using a tool is allowed to access devices in listed industrial control panels which is what we're looking at or enclosures in hazardous locations hey have you ever seen a hazardous look an explosion proof panel board uh, yeah, you don't buy those at Home Depot, right? Those things, I don't know what they cost, but uh, in order to, to get to them, a lot of times you, you got to unbolt everything and yeah, you're going to have to use a tool. Or enclosures for environmental protection. A lot of times if you have, you know, a stainless steel enclosure or 3R enclosure, something that's designed for the exterior or corrosion, you know, corrosion protection, hose down protection, um, the circuit breaker is not just going to be right there. You, you might have to undo the cover with a screwdriver or a tool. Uh, if that's the case, then that's fine. And, and I think most inspectors were already viewing it that way, but that's not what the code said. So using a tool is okay in illicit industrial control panels, enclosures in hazardous locations, or enclosures for environmental protection. The enclosure itself and its overcurrent devices must comply with 240.24a when the enclosure is open. So once you've opened it, the, the overcurrent devices have to be readily accessible. But opening it with a tool is perfectly fine. The other thing that changed here is 240.24e, not located in bathrooms. Overcurrent devices, other than supplementary devices, are not allowed in bathrooms or showering facilities or locker rooms. Okay, so a couple of things here. First of all, it used to say overcurrent devices are not allowed in bathrooms of dwelling units and dormitories. Now it says, look, any bathroom, it's not allowed. And, and that's one of those things that, as a code instructor, I couldn't tell you how many times I was asked, you know, going over Article 240, hand comes up, Ryan, how come you can have a panel in a bathroom in commercial and not in residential? I've never had a good answer for that. I got to be honest here. I've, I've scratched my head and come up with some examples, but the truth is uh, it probably never should have been allowed, right? Either allow it in all of them or don't allow it in any of them. So overcurrent devices like these, right? Not allowed in bathrooms or showering facilities or locker rooms. And there you go. So this picture was a bathroom in New Orleans. It complied when it was installed. It complied when I took the picture. It would not comply today. Now, does that mean I have to go and rip it out? Of course not. It just means that today you couldn't install it in that bathroom. You know, when it comes to overcurrent devices in bathrooms, 
<laughs> they're just, they're, they're always worth chuckling at. You can see all sorts of funny pictures. This is one that my friend Roger sent me uh, almost 20 years ago, as you can see by the, uh, by the timestamp. Uh, this was in North Carolina. And uh, yeah, yeah, you mean that's not okay? <laughs> yeah, that's not okay. And this is another one that, uh, that a friend of mine gave me. Oh, this is probably back in 2008 or so. I was teaching a class uh, here local in Salt Lake City. And uh, somebody showed me this picture, and uh, they said, "Yeah, this is at the uh, this is at the office where he worked." Man, you got the panel board, you got the toilet paper mounted right to the panel cover door. You know, very uh, very handy. So I'll let you guys come up with the jokes that you want to use to uh, to describe that installation. But as far as Article 240 goes, we're done. We're going to move into Article 250, grounding and bonding, on the next set of videos. I think we got maybe five videos to cover in Article 250. We'll see you then.